What's up, board game people? The men in white cloaks have kicked down my door. I've locked myself in the bathroom to quickly make this video because they're coming to take me away. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh god, most of you are too young to understand that joke. Uh, anyways. Lobotomy 2 launched on Kickstarter this morning, and by the time I post this video, it will have almost certainly have funded. Yep, it has. Um, a quick disclaimer, lobotomy examines delicate subject matter with a twist of dark humor applied. The subject will not be for everyone, and that's okay. If the subject matter bothers you, move on. There are plenty of other great games out there. So yes, while this game could be a bit controversial, it wasn't meant to be. While mental health is no laughing matter, it's something that shouldn't be kept behind closed doors and made into some taboo conversation topic either. Games are growing up. Some difficult and edgy subject matters being explored all over the industry. Putting a humorous twist on something can sometimes make it easier to talk openly about. So please consider putting down your signs and pitchforks and giving something with prickly subject matter a chance for once. This is a topic that hits close to home for me as I've recently had first-hand experience with it. So if you are or suspect you may be having a mental health issue, talk to someone. It can be as simple as talking to your family doctor. They're there to help you and it can change your world. An even quicker disclaimer, these are my opinions and only my opinions. I don't have a preview copy of this game. I'm not that special. The information I have gathered has been gleaned from the campaign page and what other content creators with copies of the game have published. If I make mistakes, I apologize and I'd love to know. Also, we may disagree on some things, and that is okay too. Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to discuss the game and hear what you think. If you like this type of content, then please subscribe and hit that like button so I know to keep going and making videos like these. So what is Lobotomy 2? The game is played in a few different modes. First and foremost is the campaign mode, which is new in Lobotomy 2. There's a 10 scenario campaign, including the introduction scenario, that will tell the story of the asylum and our heroes, or our patients. There's also a more sandbox daily nightmares mode that will give or take 12 scenarios that you can partake in. Daily nightmares are one-off scenarios that function similar to the way scenarios in Lobotomy 1 function. This game is designed for 1-5 to five players. So if you play with less than three, they encourage you to play multiple characters, as the scenarios are balanced for at least three characters. Playing more than one patient at a time should be easy enough, and in my case, I'm sure we'll both choose to play two characters each, so we can explore all their various disorders and quirks. Brought back from the original lobotomy is the Warden and his time tracking. As time progresses, the Warden marches down the time tracker, triggering more and different events that will affect gameplay. As the campaign progresses, the amount and type of events change, keeping things fresh and ramping the difficulty up. As the Warden hits the sixth spot on the track, monsters can become their empowered versions, and the players are able to flip their cards and begin to use their insane side, their new special abilities there. The characters have their own personal quests they must complete before they're able to activate the insane side of their character card. Every turn your character will have three action points to move, attack, upgrade your equipment, or do any no other number of activities. The patients will take their turn, the monsters and the asylum staff will then take their turn. Monsters are separated into basic, elite, and boss hierarchies and will activate based on their designation. Each scenario will give you different conditions for winning or losing or something in between. All the while, your patients will be scavenging the asylum looking for junk to upgrade their arsenal of weapons and abilities with the end goal of making a clean break and being beam me up Scotty free and loony on the outside. The map is built from nine large double-sided tiles that assemble to quite a large game board with a great table presence. Difficulty in the game is highly customizable and scalable. Different mechanics and systems in the game are difficulty adjustable and allow you to play the way you want to. I'm hoping the campaign has a more set in stone or predefined difficulty setting. This isn't something I particularly want to have to think about and fiddle with as I'm setting up the game, but it's a nice option to have. As you go through the scenarios, you upgrade your weapons and equipment, starting out with something like a simple baseball bat and ending up with anything from a maid staff to a lightsaber. Sure, you're not going to find an M16 in a regular Saiyan Asylum, but if you're a little off your rocker and you believe it's there, who's to say it isn't? Game plays well into the question, is what you're seeing real, or is it all in your head? Weapons are also upgradable via the junk you collect as you explore the Asylum. Your ability to upgrade your weapons is based off your proficiency to that weapon type, allowing you to upgrade even basic weapons into powerful versions of themselves. Characters' abilities and skills are based off their own disorders. Their quirks and diagnoses become their greatest weapons. You start out with a small set of disorders and gain more as time progresses. Insanity is a resource in the asylum, and you'll be spending it to gain or upgrade your disorders, attack, defend, and many more things. Abilities are used and then placed on cooldown, so firing off all your best attacks in a turn may not always be your best bet. Best to keep some of those wacky disorders in your back pocket in case you're caught in the open by one of the troopers or a hellhound. Death isn't the end for your characters either. On your next turn, you'll respawn. 
but you'll cause time to move ahead as well. So while the game may get you into some challenging situations, there's always a chance for a comeback. What are the pledge levels? First up is the admission pledge for 79 euros. When just checking in, you'll receive the core game and the criminally insane character pack that should include all of the unlocked stretch goals and daily unlock characters achieved during the campaign. Next is the sanity pledge for 129 euros. The sanity pledge nets you the core box, the inferno expansion, and the criminally insane character pack. Last is the madness pledge coming in at 199 euros. With this pledge, you get the core, the inferno expansion, the criminally insane character pack, the Jazza character pack, the Villain Ward character pack, and the Legacy Ward character pack, where they really get you as the add-ons. This is where things can get expensive, but honestly, the Sanity Pledge or the Madness Pledge would contain more than enough for most. The first add-on is the Hell Level expansion for 25 euros. This is one of the only add-ons I'm currently considering. They'll add an increased difficulty level to the game, a set of thematic miniatures, cards, and rules for using them. Next, we get the Villain Ward for 16 euros that comes with three villain-themed characters and cards to play them. Then for another 16 euros, we get the Jazz Award with four content creator-themed characters who I have no idea who they are, and their cards. We also have the Legacy Ward character pack for 16 euros with three patients from the original Lobotomy making a return with updated sculpts and character cards. An additional dice set for another 16 euros. The Lobotomy 1 character conversion set for 12 euros allowing you to play the original patients in the new game. The Lobotomy 1 monster conversion set for 16 euros. Then it's on to a bunch of character and monster sets from the original Lobotomy. This is where they really lose me. The original ward pack at 39 euros gives you the minis and cards for the original patients from Lobotomy 1. These can be used with the newest campaign, so I guess I can see a use there. The monster packs, however, cannot be used in the campaign. They instead come with daily nightmare cards, allowing them to be used as one-off encounters or part of your own custom campaign. These packs range from 19 to 49 euros, and sadly, while I like some of the sculpts, I'm not terribly creative when tabling games, and I prefer to stick to the pre-written campaign. I just don't have much use or playtime for one-off scenarios and such. But if you enjoy throwing quick games together or creating your own campaigns, this might be for you. So what's in the box? I'm not going to go through and list everything in each box. Instead, I'm going to try to quickly cover the gist of it, and you can check out the link to the campaign below if you want a closer look. In the core, we're currently getting eight patient minis, including fan favorite John Wick and Sexy Gandalf. We're getting eight boss minis with some really nice sculpts. Uh, I was really excited to see Big Daddy and finally see the Hatter miniature. We're getting 20 elite monster minis. Many of these seem to be repeated sculpts. If anything, I'd love to see them change these up just a bit, add some different poses, but that adds to production costs, and I just don't know if they accounted for that. You're also getting 34 basic monsters. The nine double-sided map tiles are quite large and seem to do a good job bringing the asylum to life. From there, they offer a whole slew of different kinds of cards, from weapons to equipments to boss cards. The art looks quite nice and everything seems pretty readable. The font might be a little small, but it's hard to see on these preview images. Game comes with enough tokens to drown you in. 420 tokens. I desperately hope there's a good insert or organizer for these. They are also throwing in a generous handful of custom dice. In the Inferno expansion, we're getting even more minis. Three new patients, three bosses, six elite monsters, 24 basic monsters. We're also getting four double-sided map tiles, a ton of new cards, and 60 more tokens. The criminally insane character pack is being filled up as the campaign progresses, but currently we can see that we will be getting Harold Thunderscar and Gwyn Esteros. On that note, they're offering timed unlocks and funding stretch goals. The unlockable goals are clearly listed on the page, and you can click on each to get a better idea of what is included. They seem to be a mix of more cards, extra dice, new characters, and some new monster types. Sadly, the plastic insert for the game is locked as a stretch goal. When I'm paying this much for a game, I want to see that kind of stuff already included. Don't be mythic. No one wants minis in a bag in their oversized boxes. We're paying for a premium product. Just figure it out. As for shipping, the shipping estimates seem to be reasonable for today's prices. You can check them out for yourself on the campaign page. They're trying to ship everything by November 22nd, which I feel may be a tad bit ambitious, but they may already be close to ready to produce most of the game. They also list the countries the project is customs friendly with and those that it is not. That does not seem to be included. A couple of quick thoughts and opinions. The page is pretty well laid out, though I had to do a bit of flipping back and forth to find all the information I was looking for. I found the lack of game found or campaign exclusives to be a bit sad, but to each their own. They're marketing it like this game will be widely available one day, and they don't want people missing out. 
Fans want to feel special during these campaigns and be rewarded for helping to produce the game. Sure, a slightly reduced price is nice, but a shiny mini can go pretty far for goodwill. The minis look great. I love the bosses and even many of the smaller minis. I'd like to see more poses and variety in the elites and monster levels. Repeating the same mini over and over 12 or more times gets old and doesn't make them stand out on the table. Also the bases. Yeah, flat bases really stink. We're getting spoiled with campaigns that are adding wonderful sculpted bases and it's quite disappointing to see these great sculpts sitting on top of flat plastic circles. Also, the base style they're using is going to make rebasing quite hard. It looks like you'll have to cut the minis off and they'll have to be glued to another base to do much basing at all. I want to paint some of this and I'm not looking forward to basing them. Last, I'll say the lack of upfront information on the different modes was a bit concerning. I really had to dig to find out about the campaign and what the daily nightmares were. I'd like to be able to thumb through at least the rough draft of the rulebook and see a clear explanation of what all gameplay is offered on the campaign page. I don't enjoy watching playthroughs and how to play videos just to learn about the game. I'm really not a fan of those type of content. If you're developing a game, you should be the best at pitching it and explaining it. On a good note, the game looks like a ton of fun. The minis are great and come in large numbers. It really seems they've improved on many of the problems in the first lobotomy game and came out swinging. I look forward to playing through the campaign and sharing my opinions on it when the game lands on my doorstep. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I have a few more videos coming this week, including a crowdfunding news and updates video featuring all the latest on Kingdoms Forlorn and many other games I'm following. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. I'd also like to know what boss are you most excited about from this campaign. Anyways, have a good one, and be sure and play something fun tonight.